big smiley face. Hi everyone, welcome to ICA TV today. We are recording this. So between, yeah. between Ro and me, we're not going to swear. Well, not often. Depends how we go. Um, this is going to be, you're either watching it from a Saturday or Sunday with a cup of tea or something nicer um, at eight o'clock, or you're catching us on a recording. So today, um, ICA TV is welcoming Ro to us and talking about her business, but also a bit of her journey of how she's come to right now, 2021, whatever happened in the last X amount of years, I've got no idea. Um, but we are going to chat about that and how are we going to help you? We're all here to support you guys in any, you know, personal growth or business growth to get your business out there. And we're going to chat, basically. We're going to chat and um, put, uh, put the world to rights. So welcome to ICA TV, hun. I'm super excited to be here. It's very cool. It's very cool. And we're going to talk about video and recording yeah. and getting their name out and anybody's name out there to the world. So just a little history. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is it that's gone? Actually, video it is. Tell us about your history. Because I've been making videos since I was about six years old when my dad first bought one of those digital Kodak cameras. You remember the ones that were like the size of your head? It's like you couldn't lift them and you yeah. just, yeah, absolutely. Ones, yeah, so he bought him one of those and I just became fascinated with like how the lens worked and how I could point this piece of glass, aka the lens, at an object that I was seeing with my eyes and see on a digital screen. And so ever since then, I've been really fascinated with, with like how things work. And I was kind of the black sheep in my family because I was the only tech savvy person. <laughs> so you're um, the one that they said, can you just do that then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. that. My dad always had to have like the latest camera. He's a very big camera geek, just like myself, really. And so I was very fortunate that he let me use his cameras to make videos as, as a hobby. And then I went to work and work in the wonderful world of TV and had various different careers in that. And after leaving the TV industry, I decided, well, let's um, let's see what else is out there. And I really liked being creative and I loved healthy living. So within about two weeks of leaving the TV industry, I set up a business in the health and wellness industry. But then I also set up a video production business as well. Now, because I was living in London at that time and working in the creative industry already, I already knew that. If I was going to start a video agency, I needed to have something that was very kind of different about me. A bit like when you're starting your own business, you have to have a bit of an edge about you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be massively different, but it does help to have something uniquely specific to you. You stand out from the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I did a lot of research into the video trends over the next five to 10 years. I asked a lot of contacts what they thought was going to be hot as well. And what kept coming up is business owners just like yourself would have this wonderful beautiful video made and they didn't know how to use it as a tool because think about it when you make a video or when you have a video made you want it to get you a certain result now the right. video production companies they didn't specialize in marketing so the business owner would get this wonderful video made then they would have to either learn to market it themselves or they would have to find somebody that's competent enough and up to their standards to market it on their behalf. Either way, it was time consuming for them mm. and very, very expensive as well. So that's why pretty much from day one, I've always focused on, yes, I can make you this really great looking video, but I can actually help you to use it as a tool to reach whatever goal it is you're looking to reach. And the rest is history, as they say, because I, I think you said you said something there. I pick up on that goal word. Yeah. You know, and we're going into marketing here. You need to know why. Yeah. What is it that that piece of marketing is going to do for you? And that's very important in, in the video world as well. That's the first step of any marketing plan. It's very easy to look at videos and think, I have no idea where to begin. <laughs> so the first step is establish your goals. 
what is it that you're looking to achieve as a result of making that particular video? Is it to generate more leads? Is it to get more exposure? Is it to take your business in a new direction? Whatever your reason is, you really need to define it so de in is. detail. That way you've then started to create an incredible blueprint for yourself. Absolutely. Totally, totally. And yeah. Uh, and this is why we were just talking very recently, like earlier yeah. today in um, our group and the Action Club, is that we had a bit of Canva training, mm. you know, how to create a, a logo or create your product, um, your banner or whatever it is on Facebook. But that, that's a product. Yeah. Like video is a product. And if you don't know what you're going to do with that, that's just a, another whole um, the word I use, fannying around, which sounds quite rude. But, you know, you're just doing something, but you don't know why you're doing it. Yeah. It's a huge thing, that goal. Yeah, absolutely. And you help people to, would you help somebody to define that goal? Yeah, I have to. Quite often, businesses will come to me and say, I know I need to do videos, but I don't know where to start. And the first place that we have to start is really establishing what their end vision actually is. And then we have to look at where they're at realistically right now in their business. Okay, that that's that. I suppose we do sometimes have a bigger, um, what's the word, vision of where we are. Yeah. And then and other people can see as well. Okay, that's very interesting. It's a bit like if you were to kind of make a cake. You know what the end result looks like, but now you have to look at the entire recipe, aka your blueprint plan, to help you get to that end recipe. Because you don't want a uh, cake like mine that ends up like this. Because <laughs> that's just a waste of time, isn't yeah. it? You know, and that you, in my view, you'll get this video that you've got sat very nicely on your computer, but actually, and it's this you've paid X about a pennies for that that video, and it's doing nothing. nothing. <laughs> just sat there going, "Well done, you've done a video." <laughs> I, I understand that as well that's very cool I like that I like the blueprint idea as well so because that's actually something you can replicate yeah over and over again that's very cool cool so if somebody came to yourselves as a business obviously your business has a name what's your business name it's called Livewire Media okay so everybody out there if you see that road come across your screen it's live wire media we didn't even mention that i'm sorry that's, that's really okay rubbish. that's rubbish um so live wire media they come and go actually i need to do something in my business um but i'm i'm really not ready to outsource it because actually my business isn't big enough but i know i need to get some sort of video content out there what would you advise them to do the first thing I would say is outsourcing probably isn't as expensive as you think. And actually outsourcing can actually make you money because video production itself can be very, very time consuming. So by outsourcing that particular part of your business, you're freeing up a minimum of like 10 hours per month, potentially, which you can then use to do the income producing activities of your business. So the first thing I would say is shift your mindset of thinking that outsourcing is expensive because it can actually, if done properly, it will make you money more so. I, I agree, yeah. We actually have some tools and strategies in place to help business owners kind of finding their feet and who want to do it themselves, which is a great start because it, it kind of gets to a point then where you, You've done it enough yourself and then you're ready to start outsourcing it so if you're at that point where you're thinking i want to do videos and i want to do it myself what i'd recommend doing is one creating a plan of action and in that plan of action step one needs to be what we've just discussed which is establish your goals your business yeah. goals even your life goals as well because Marketing is a very big part of your overall business growth strategy. And if you haven't got that down to a T, then it's almost like you're shooting in the dark a little bit. So step one, establish your goals. Step number two, define your audience. Ooh, Don't be one of those. like that. Yeah. Ideal clients, advertisers. Yeah. Don't be one of those business owners that say, I'm just, my product or my service is for everybody. Great. Will your product or your service appeal to a four-year-old girl in China? 
Probably not. Mine wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So really get specific on who your audience actually is. I know if you're sitting there thinking, well, my audience is quite broad. Awesome. Still define who they are because chances are there's going to be a niche within your audience. So the way that you can define them is by their age, age group. Their location, where are they based in the world? What languages do they speak? Because a lot of people do speak multiple languages. What are their hobbies and their interests? What are, what are their main reasons for setting up their own business? The point I'm trying to drive home here is the deeper you get to know your audience, you can create content that's specifically tailored to them. And when you do that, they're much more likely to pay attention to what it is that you're actually talking about in your content. Because they're interested in it, aren't they? Yeah. Then step three, look at the pain points that they are having as well. Do not make that mistake of talking about things that just you are interested in. That's okay from a personal branding point of view, and it's okay to talk about things that you are interested in um, for a short while or every now and then. But people are interested in what is in it for them. What will I get as a result of watching the particular content? Because think about it from a business point of view, like a transaction between you and your audience. When somebody chooses to invest the time to watch your content or to read your content, they're essentially, they're giving up a piece of their time in order to, to get an exchange of value. Now, if that value is not there, they're not gonna exchange their time in return. Mm -hmm. So the way that you hook people in is you provide value. Now, quality value is defined by how in depth you reach their pain points. When somebody comes to you, they're gonna to come to you with what I call the symptom. That's the problem that they're gonna to come to you and say, I need help with this, can you resolve it? Your job then is to go deeper because there's almost always something that is causing that particular problem. And when you create content around the deeper rooted cause of the problem, that is when you want to a winner because most people are not aware of that. And yet it's sort of the one thing that can help them release their tension, their problems. So talk to the deeper rooted pain points, create content around that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tend to think that if I give people a treasure map to solve their problems, they're gonna go off and do it themselves. And there's two answers that I have to that. If they do, awesome. You've done a great service, you've done exactly. a great job. They're much more likely to remember you because you've, you've helped them along the way. Yeah. But on the contrary, this is going to sound a bit um, like contradictory. <laughs> and I can honestly say that after over working in marketing for 10 years, that is not the case. People don't look at this and think, wow, I've got everything that I need to you know to, to get to my next level of my business. I don't need that person anymore. So what actually happens is people are much more likely to remember you because you've helped them to solve a problem. You've helped them in some way or another get to the next level of their life. They're going to appreciate that. And if you show up consistently in your content and your delivery, they're much more likely to remember you and therefore pick up the phone or send you an email or get in touch with you to say, hey, I need some help with this. You've helped me so far. Now I'm ready to take on your services. Oh, I love it. It's that trust, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, no like and trust. The, the, the world has changed. Yeah um because of social media because we are in people's lives because we are um if, if we're not suited and booted behind a glass yeah anything or a brick wall we are actually the people of the future because we are able to talk directly to our ideal clients and literally be us and i think that's a big skill as well do you do you believe that we have to be us yeah, it's not always easy to be yourself on camera, especially the first time doing it. It mm. does take practice. It is a bit of an alien process. And what I tend to say to people when they do get nervous on camera is treat it like a two-way conversation. Now, what I mean by that is, and you, you mentioned this kind of briefly just now, Teresa, a lot of people go on social media and talk about me, me, me. Look at how great my product or my service is. Look at what I've done for X, Y, and Z. Look at blah, blah, blah. They make the focus all about them. Nobody cares about them. 
I hate to break it, but nobody cares. Again, going back to my earlier point, people care about what is in it for them. So yep. what you need to do instead is create a two-way conversation between you and your audience. And the way that you do that is you ask them, what kind of content do you want me to create? Has this resonated with you? Get them to engage in your content. And that way, again, you can create more specific content that's tailored to them. And they're much more likely to appreciate that level of value that you've delivered. It's a bit like how it's, it's getting involved with the conversation, isn't it? Yeah. And it relieves that pressure away from you because when you get on camera, especially for the first time, and I sometimes even get it myself as well, like you feel the nerves kicking in. But I hate to break it to you. And this is going to be a bit of a truth bomb for some of you. You're probably making it about yourself. Oh, so that's a bit ego driven. Possibly. A lot of people are driven by what are people going to think of me? What, what's going to happen as a result of this? Like nothing bad is going to happen because if you show up delivering value, people will tune in and they will appreciate that. Mm. Like I can guarantee you, nobody has done business with me off the way that my, my hair has looked that day. <laughs> nobody has done business with me because of how my voice sounds or how I look. What they care about is can I deliver on the problem that they are particularly having? And if the answer is yes, they're gonna do business. They're gonna wanna tune in, they're gonna wanna watch. Yep. So part of it is about getting over ourselves with love and accepting that we are going to screw it up we are going to mess it up yeah. and that's great because it shows that we're human absolutely absolutely we've done that today Rowena um, we, Rowena, sorry we've done it today um we've gone live in the action club and we were going to go specifically okay. live in our group Facebook wouldn't let us play <laughs> It went, no, sorry. And we can, you know, one of ICA's biggest things that we push out is actually service. Hmm. We want to make sure that the people in our audience, like yourselves, you know, guys who are watching, you we get served, you get served by us. And like you've just said, is we need to know what you want us to serve you with, you know, and this is why we do ICA TV. And and sometimes we do go, actually, sorry guys, we've done something. I don't know what we've done we're not magic but something's not worked and we have to not have mine is we don't have you know slopey shoulders we own up to go actually we didn't do that that mm. didn't work we've done something that didn't didn't do what we wanted it to do so i know that you give people a platform much like ica tv to um help your audience as well so tell us about that so that is a group for business owners who are looking to take their mindset and their video marketing strategy to that next level. And I say mindset because a big part of marketing growth and business growth comes down to what is going on in here. A big part of presenting comfortably on camera is what is going on in here. So within that group, I share tips and strategies on presenting like the professionals do, presenting with confidence, but not being ego driven. And I talk to you about the like, how to specifically do my job. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> but like you say, though, it's not, you know, if, we're, if you're giving service, you yeah. know, it doesn't mean that thank you very much. I'm off. It's actually I get to know, like and trust you and yeah. then go, actually, hun, can you help me with this? Exactly. And that's what we're after. OK, Yeah. so that is a Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook, definitely send me a request to get on there. The, um, the tag is live why i have to remember this now live wire media video marketing tips <laughs> okay can you send me the link yeah. and i'll put this in the thread when we go live on saturday so that'd be yeah. cool excellent yeah and and they can just contact you yeah so if you have any queries around video marketing if there's something that you're not sure about you can either message me directly and i will answer it for you i may even do a live video on it because chances are somebody else is having that particular query as well or you can add it as a discussion point within that same group the whole purpose of the group is it's designed to be a nurturing supportive and caring community that actually want to help you to thrive awesome awesome and sometimes there's a you know we're not all 
as confident in our business to start with. So if you're actually, somebody else is asking a question, you're going, I really wish I'd asked that and I didn't, but somebody's asked, I'll answer that. So you can actually support other people in business without even yeah. knowing it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So send me the link and we'll put that out there to, really? to, to help people come in. So ICA TV is here as a platform for everybody. So if you guys, you know, you're out there watching and you wish to share about your business, let me know. It's like it's the same, but you also have you, my darling, have experts in their field that come out and talk on your your channel. Um, I was lucky enough to do it last week, yeah. so thank you very much. We've swapped <laughs> skills; it's very cool. Um, so, if they if somebody's got a skill that they'd like to share that will help business owners, yeah, what would they do for that? Would they come and give you a shout? Yeah, they can come and give me a shout. So, I have a vodcast called Live Wire TV. And what we do is similar to what we're doing here today, Teresa, but it's like we um, have two different options where we can either do a 15 minute segment that's pre-recorded and we really shine a spotlight onto your business. And because we're in video marketing, we talk about how your business helps business owners or um, customers to solve their particular problems. So it really positions you as the expert in your space, which you are already. And it allows you to tap into a bigger network so on LinkedIn, for example, I have 4,000 followers. That is constantly growing by the day. Facebook, it's about 5,000. So you're reaching a massive audience already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we can either interview you for 15 minutes or you can choose to have the full 45-minute um, interview, which is a small fee of just 15 pounds. And then off the back of that, you can also have highlights videos edited for you, which can then be repurposed on social media. Fabulous, fabulous. So it's just a, a plat just, it's not just, it's frigging awesome to get your, your name out there and your and your business out there. So fabulous, fabulous. So where would your best direction for people to go? Hi, I want to talk to this lovely lady about video. Where is the best place to best find place you? To go is to you on my Facebook page at, at Livewire Media UK. Okay. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. My tag is just there, Rohini Makwana. Yep. <laughs> I'll hover. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but to get there. So if you um, just want to touch on this goal and limiting belief thing and, and actually, you know, as a female business owner yourself, mm. our audience out there is female business owners. So if somebody is sort of struggling with that, I can't do I don't know where to go. I'm, you know, I'm cleaning out the fridge. I'm doing the ironing. You know, I've got the best cleanest house and the ironing's done than anybody I know, but I'm supposed to be earning money from my passion, my, my dream. Yeah. What would you share as, as, as somebody who's been in business for a while? What would you share with this audience? I would say a few things, actually. So one, create a really, really powerful why. So why is your reason for doing business in the first place? It could be to be more financially secure. It could be to send your kids to private school or go on more holidays. Whatever it is, it needs to be so powerful that it makes you get off, off your butt and work. Whatever that is. That I've heard that your why either needs to make you cry because it connects so deeply to you emotionally when you think about it, or it needs to make you get off your butt and work for it. I like so that. Establish your why. And then also um, think about the amount of people that you could be serving if you got over yourself. That's a bit of a truth bomb for some of you, mm. but the reality is you're holding yourself back because you're in your own comfort zone, but somebody else out there needs what it is that you have. They need you to show up consistently. They need you to be there for them. To give you a bit of perspective, I was not this confident when I started doing videos myself. My coach kept saying to me, you need to get on camera. And I was thinking, oh God, I don't want to be the face of my, my business. What are people going to think? Like, what do I say? What do I do? And all these like limiting beliefs kind of kept floating around in my mind. And in the end, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to see what happens because I'm teaching people this stuff and yet I'm not doing it myself. Uh -huh. So I got onto camera and it took me two hours to do, so, what, I didn't mean to swear, two hours <laughs> to do my first pre-recorded video. 
it took me half an hour to do my first ever live video because I had to delete it because I was completely rubbish to say the least. <laughs> But I kept showing up consistently. I kept showing up consistently for myself to kind of overcome that, those negative emotions and showing up consistently because I knew that other people needed me to be there for them. And as a result of that, I now get people contacting me off the back of my video saying, hey, can you help me with this? Can you do this for me? Now they may not have engaged in my content at all. Like they may not have liked or commented or shared in it, but they're silently watching. Mm. And a lot of people do that. They silently watch what it is that you're about. And then when you're, when they are ready to get in touch with you, they will because you showed up consistently for them. That's true. The other thing I would say as well is get yourself a coach or somebody that's going to hold you accountable. Because if you, if you are holding yourself accountable, it's very easy for you to let yourself off the hook. But get somebody like an accountability group. I'm sure that you guys can do this and I can achieve. Absolutely. Get somebody else to say, have you done this this week? And you either have to lie and say, yes, I have. And you, you really haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard to do when you're looking at somebody in the eye. Yeah, exactly. Or you're going to have to sheepishly say, I haven't do it. And then that person is going to give you that kick up the butt that you need to get it done. Absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, there are loads of people out there yeah. who are, could be in your accountability partner. I would say that don't make it a personal one. Don't make it your other half. Yeah. You know, don't make it your business partner. You know, make it somebody who's not actually within your business because then there's no, he can't get around it. I know I can get around Graham. If I said, oh, I want to, I don't know, I want to eat healthy this week. And then it, I get the ice cream out. He'll go, oh, yeah, that's okay. Because <laughs> he loves me. He's my yeah. other half, you know. And it's the same within all our relationships. Have somebody that's going to go, no, Teresa, put the bloody ice cream back in the freezer. You don't need it. You know, and and that's, that's why I say to hire a coach because you're Absolutely. paying them for the time. And then if you haven't done the thing that you were supposed to do, you're wasting your money. Absolutely. And we all, I, I personally, you know, I'm quite attached to my earnings because I've mm. worked hard for them. You don't want to, you know, give, pay for something and not get that result. Absolutely. You know? So oh, I like that one. I like that one. And, and we are going to, you know, yourselves and us, ICA, you know, we're here to help you grow your businesses. That's we're both on the same platform as in we're collaborating, we're talking yeah. to each other. So we are here for all that ICA TV uh, as well as like wife TV. We're here to help you do that. So sit back and look at those goals. Yeah. We've just said, look at those goals, why you want to get somewhere, you know, whether it is the, you know, an extra week off, two weeks, a year off with your kids or whether it's a, you know, a financial thing where you want to get something specific for yourself, whatever it is, hold on to it. I love the bit you said, um, if it, if, it, if you kick up the butt to get going or if it makes you cry you know that yeah. whole emotion I love that absolutely and, yeah. and actually get there and go oh, God, I've just got to do it I've just yeah. got to do it because I there is no question but sometimes we need that help we need that hand holding that yeah. learning that something that somebody's teaching to take us yeah, and your goals and your why are bound to change over time. Like my why when I first started out in business was to go to a restaurant and make my decision based on what was on the left-hand side of the menu, not the right side. Oh my gosh, I am so there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, and we look at ourselves as women and we look at our history and sometimes we bring our history, our life, with us forward yeah. you know I've you know people know a little bit about my story but I used to be a nursery manager I used to teach little people and I used to bring in six pound 21 an hour and I used to raise my kids I was a single mom hmm. and on that six pound 21 an hour full-time working you know yes we were on benefits because there is no shy you know raising kids etc if you're on benefits don't, don't make that a negative it is a thing it is what it is um but it is you go out and you buy your shopping from what the the number is on the tag and you buy if you go out for dinner it might be the 
the the right hand side rather than the left hand side for that decision making so um, at just, a tiny just goal like Teresa, as well just to add i think a lot of as women we tend to get um we almost tend to use our why as a an excuse so oh i can't do this video because i've got to do this for the kids mm. i've got to do the washing i've got to um do the vacuum <laughs> So don't use your why as an excuse to not do something. Oh, I love that. I think we might have to finish on that huge statement because absolutely we put other things first mm. or other people's needs first and not see the bigger picture of the, the why is the bigger thing, not the let's get to the why. Yeah. You know, let's, let's you know, the kids need me reading to them or we... <laughs> You know, or I know do kids. I haven't got kids. You know, mine have grown up. If I read to them, it'd be a bit of a challenge. Um, <laughs> hey, you do, mother. Um, but it is that I think huge thing to leave a thought process. Are you putting things? Are you putting things in your way? Mm. A reason, an excuse, whatever it is, to not do something that's scary, that's out of your comfort zone. And I suppose that's where we both put our hands up and go, we're here, guys, you know, chat to us. We've both been in business um, a while. We're not, <laughs> we're not 12. We've been there, done it. We've made quite a few mistakes. Um, we've come over those. We've grown. We've all, we both had coaches to give us that kick up the butt when we need it. Yeah. So um, we are aware of what's going on. If you had one thing then, darling, in the next year as a business owner and as a woman, what would you like to achieve? I didn't even tell you that was coming. <laughs> one thing. Oh, God, it's really hard to narrow it down. I'm sorry. I know I was saying it. Again. I didn't even warn you. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I think it would be more growth because I've got this firm belief that if you have a gift, it's your duty to share that with the world and if you're not playing big it's kind of selfish that's just my personal opinion because somebody out there needs what I have to deliver and so my job is to reach that person and the way to do that is through growth so personal and business growth yeah. and and to reach out and share your skill to as many people as you can have you got a number can i go i'm not gonna go this coachy route have you got a number that you have pit fem oh i'm gonna say female business owners that's what we do but business owners that you'd like to um bring into your realm in this next year i would say at least an additional five to ten clients per month five or ten yeah which one probably five five yeah five new clients per month yeah starting when starting next month what day is what is it next month august yeah august goodness me where's this year going mm -hmm. so five new clients mm. on on a retainer that you can actually get their business to their goal yeah on video we might have to chat to see where you are at the end of august I 100%, like. yeah no pressure yeah that's cool i'm gonna say thank you sweetheart really for joining us um, i appreciate your time as well Teresa. Uh, it's just great to hear other people's perspective and people's growth and what we can share as female business owners for other people to grow their business absolutely so out there in ica tv land if you wish to contact any of us give us a shout we are welcome to have a call um have a well both do interviews grab an interview um, but if you have any challenges out there, ladies, do ask somebody, don't mull, don't clean the fridge again. You know, it's fine. It's going to be there tomorrow. Um, if you're not growing your business fast enough, if you are winging it, is that the right word? If you're winging yeah. it, if you're just going, I'm here in my office, office is beautiful, but there's no clients then for goodness sake, let's talk. Let's get out there and get your business out there. Mm -hmm. And we are both very friendly people. And we're very nice. We're not going to 
we cannot make you do anything that you don't want to do. And I think that's quite a scary thing when you do reach out into the world of marketing or marketers that you think that you're going to be made to do something that you don't want to do. And you're not absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely not. But actually, if you don't make the call, if you don't make contact, your business is likely to stay where it is. And we don't want that. We want more businesses out there growing and economy growing and us actually living the life, living the why that we want. So thank, thank you. you, my sweet. I really appreciate it. I will put all the links that you're going to send me in a thread. Awesome. And you'll see us both on this Saturday, actually, um, on ICA TV. So thanks a lot. Don't go anywhere. I'll just stop the recording. We'll say goodbye to our lovely viewers and we'll catch up soon. So bye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everyone. Thanks we'll for having me on. You're welcome. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.